So I'm sitting here with uh, Brandon Mc McCarran. Yep. yep. Um, <coughs> you are with the whiskey creation team. Five years you've been already with Glen Morangy and you've already 14 years of experience within the scotch business. Yep. Thank you very much for having us today. Oh, thank you. And this is one of your creations. Can you tell us something about it? Yeah, so this is the... It's actually one of my boss's creations. So my boss mm -hmm. is Dr. Bill Lumsden, who mm -hmm. is our master distiller. You know, he's the director of whiskey creation. Mm -hmm. And this is the 10th time that we've decided to release a private edition. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a private edition once a year. It's always a different whiskey. It's mm -hmm. always a single batch. And we're just trying to be innovative, experimental, um, kind of push the boundaries of the Scotch Whiskey Act. Mm -hmm. um, but more more important than anything is to make really interesting, delicious whiskies. Mm -hmm. And the most recent one, uh, just released right now, is Glenmorangie Alta. Mm -hmm. So everybody has read about the the yeast, the wild yeast. Um, that means you, you had to uh, produce that kind of stuff. You had to mature it. So the idea is pretty old. So yep. Yeah, yeah. So uh, some of our private editions, some of our whiskies in general are um, wood finishes. Mm -hmm. uh, wood finishing being a, a technique that the Glenmorangie Company mastered um, and pioneered. So when you do a wood finish, what you tend to do is take quite a mature whiskey, so say like original, mm -hmm. and transfer it into another cask. And maybe two or three years later, you have a new product. Mm -hmm. But when you do something like this, this is sort of groundbreaking trials uh, with the spirit character. Yeah, when you do that, you're looking at a much, much longer mm -hmm. uh, period because you need to make the spirit at the mm -hmm. distillery. I um, have to have the idea first. Oh, create sure. the yeast, yeah. <laughs> make the spirit, then mature it. So yeah, uh, this is a this is a very, very long sort of labor of love. Mm -hmm. uh, is there is there is it comparable to the original with with maturation or how yeah yeah I, i would say i would say it's, it's absolutely comparable to the original the only real difference between original and alta is that original uses uh distiller's yeast saccharomyces cerevisiae mm -hmm. just like every distillery uses mm -hmm. and with alta we found this very unique wild yeast that only really exists around the barley fields around our distillery, uh, which is called Saccharomyces diamath. Um, mm -hmm. We mashed with Scottish barley. We fermented for the same length of time. We distilled in the same copper pot stills. Um, so everything was kept as consistent as it could be to really just show what difference happens when you use a new type of yeast. Now, there's two differences. Uh, as well as the yeast, there's two other differences. Glenmorangie original only uses first and second fill ex bourbon mm -hmm. casks, so it's quite oaky and quite you know wood driven. We didn't want Alta to have too much of the wood flavors because we really wanted to show mm -hmm. off the difference of the yeast. So this uses second fill and refill barrels. Mm -hmm. um, the other difference is almost just to really show off the difference of the spirit, but also as a thank you to everyone for ten years of private edition. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little higher in strength. So it's at 51.2% oh, yeah, alcohol. Yeah, definitely. So let's have a try. I'm, sure. I'm really excited. I've already tried it. So <laughs> <laughs> I I know what to expect. Oh, good. Well, I suggest, will we start with original? Yeah, let's, let's yeah. start with the original. It's always good to kind of, you know, reawaken your taste buds. Mm -hmm. So um, I introduced you as uh, from the whiskey creation team. Yes. How can you... How can my viewers uh, imagine how a whiskey is being created? Well, it's lots and lots and lots of sampling, you know? Okay. So there's... Oh, oh yeah, I was going to hand you the first one. Um, so we're, we're looking at, first and foremost, the spirit that's coming out of both uh, distilleries that I work on. So Glenmorangie Spirit is... Uh, sent down to our lab and we'll set up and nose and make sure that it's elegant, fruity, floral. And if it isn't for whatever reason, if it's not right, uh, we'll help make adjustments at the distillery to bring the spirit back to being at the right character. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of my job is securing the right amounts of the right quality of barley and buying the right casks year on year to keep our supply. Um, after that, 
between that spirit being, you know, zero years old, because it's just off the still, to it being 10 years old and becoming original, we'll be sampling and checking and looking and thinking um, all the way through that 10 year period. Mm -hmm. So, and then of course we, we make many permanent expressions and we also work on brand new whiskies as well. So it's kind of hard to, you know, mm -hmm. have a, a standard day. We're just always <laughs> sampling, looking, thinking. And of course we have like meetings and some of the more dull work to do, <laughs> but we're constantly trying to think of what can we do next? What's the new thing that we can make? But the most important whiskey we make is this one right here. This is Glen Morangy Original. Yeah, I've just been recently been to uh, the distillery with, uh, I've met Andy and- Oh, nice. It's. Uh, it's a real pleasure and I've had, had the, the pleasure of um, trying the, the, the mash uh -huh. and the fermented mash. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the, the wash, wash and the wash. Uh, and it's, uh, it's incredibly how, incredible how you, you find some of the flavors just right in there. Yes, I would say those flavors that you're describing, that wort, that wash, mm -hmm. about 40% of those flavors are what makes up this mm -hmm. glass of whiskey. So, yeah. yeah, the thing is, I, I didn't get that much from the from the from the the wort, uh -huh. but from the wash, the wash was uh, yeah. there was just that distinct. There was that that kind of fruitiness, a little yep. bit of pineapple going on in there. Well, you're absolutely you just, right. That was just you just find it in in the whiskey yeah. again. You're absolutely right. So the wort, you won't really pick up the aromas, but two things that are really important about the wort. First of all. Um, we mash very slowly. Mm -hmm. So when you mash slowly, you get very clear wort. So this crystal clear wort, um, that's important. Some distillers want wort that's quite cloudy to make mm -hmm. a different character of whiskey. But we want ours really clear, really free of solids. And also it's full of mineral rich spring water. So it's our mm -hmm. Tarlogi spring water. Yeah, I've been there as well. Yeah. Tarlogi so, is, is, a, is a magical place. Uh, it really is. <laughs> it's magical to visit and it's magical for making whiskey as well. Yeah, I unfortunately couldn't see the... The, uh, the bubbles you, coming through. The bubbles coming through. No, I was uh, a day without the bubbles. Ah, was it raining or...? It was a bit raining. It was yeah. dri a bit drizzly. Yeah, sometimes it's raining because the light just goes so dark you can't quite see it. Mm. But that mineral rich water, once you add yeast to that sugary wort, mm -hmm. uh, the minerals mean that the yeast is really able to function really effectively. So there's this powerful effervescent active fermentation mm -hmm. and fermentation creates esters so it creates acids it creates alcohols and when they combine those are esters white fruits apples pears mm -hmm. oranges citrus fruits oranges lemon stone fruits tropical fruits all of these flavors that you can pick up in this glass are created during fermentation mm -hmm. Mm. And you'll have also, um, after you saw the fermentation, you will, you will have seen our giraffes, you know, our, <laughs> our tall copper pot stills. Mm -hmm. And they also have this really important part to play in making this whiskey. Because mm -hmm. those stills are so tall. Now, they're tiny in volume, but really tall. Um, lots of copper contact, so no mm -hmm. sulfur. There's no sulfur. There's no heavy notes. It sort of strips out these um, masking flavours. So by stripping them out, it leaves behind oranges, lemons, leaves behind these tropical fruits that you're looking for in the spirit. Mm -hmm. So you end up with this really elegant, fruity and floral. We haven't spoke much about these sort of floral mm -hmm. perfumed notes, but it leaves behind this fruity and floral spirit, which is perfect for maturing in ex-bourbon casks. Mm -hmm. So that is why Glenmorangie Original is matured for 10 years in ex-bourbon casks. Um, and just to make it even more special, uh, we only use a cast twice. So it's first mm -hmm. fill and second fill casks only that go into making Glenmorangie original. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, yeah, a, a really, a really fine, fine spirit that you have there with a 10 year old. Yeah, sorry. It's got great texture. It's very creamy, mm -hmm. very buttery. It's got lots of vanilla, caramel, honey, these classic mm -hmm. um, American white oak characteristics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm find it amazing how you can can mix the bourbon character very lightly together with with this fruitiness yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's that 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 thing when you when you think of a highland like a uh, a beginner thinks mm -hmm. of the highland whiskey always rough and tough and 
but uh, you can you can even if you have the Glamorangi, it's up in the north at the shore, and it just shows. Oh yeah, you can make a fine spirit there as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, what I love is meeting people who drink Glenmorangie and they say it's the first single malt that they really, you know, got into. So it's a great place to start. But what mm -hmm. I also love is people who have been drinking it for 20 or 30 years and they keep coming back and coming back because there's so many different layers and textures and flavours, so many different mm -hmm. things to experience. And I'm, I'm actually going to just put some water in mine. So I don't know, do you want some? Oh, you want some? Yeah. So a little bit of water in this and it changes completely, just this tiny amount of water. And you find it gets sweeter, more sugary, like white sugar's been added, it feels like. The vanilla becomes thicker, it might even be like vanilla ice cream. And the lemons are no longer acidic and sharp, it's now getting like yeah, lemonade. Now, now it really feels creamy. Yeah. You yeah. have a, uh, a good amount of creaminess before, but now it really, really feels creamy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just very smooth, very silky. Mm. So yeah, mm -hmm. there's all these different parts that play to make all of these flavors. You know, it's famous for its complexity. Mm -hmm. It's this huge range of flavors. So mm -hmm. the mineral rich water, careful mashing, long fermentation, mm -hmm. slow distillation, only using the cast twice. All of these things are done for a reason and it's to create all the flavors yep. that are in this glass. Mm. Yeah, I like it. So um, how satisfied are you with the the new yeast i mean uh it for me i've tried it and and it is definitely something different yeah yes is it is it is it did did any questions arise of or oh, should we change something uh <laughs> with this whiskey <laughs> no i mean with with your standard range oh right oh uh, sorry i was going to say how dare you <laughs> um no so I, I think quite a few people are wondering now We've tried this new yeast. It's, it's our yeast. No one else can use it. Are we going to change everything to it? And no, we're not. This whiskey is just perfection to us. What you know, we love Glenmore mm -hmm. original, and you can only make that by using the distiller's yeast that we use right now. Yeah, the original recipe. Exactly. Definitely. Yeah, with the Cerevisiae mm -hmm. yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. This mm -hmm. is exciting and different and special. Mm -hmm. So. We're not going to take this and just transfer it back to all of our other products, mm -hmm. but it does just it opens up a it will, whole it will new stay, chapter. Stay as a as a a single bottling, or are you are yeah. you thinking about like I don't know half of it? Or I don't know. so this 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 will stay as a single bottling. A single bottling. So it the when Morangi Alta will be that's mm -hmm. it. But that doesn't mean we won't do other experiments, you yeah, know, sure. with the <laughs> diamath yeast. So we might do some that mature for longer or shorter. We might use some different woods. Um, but like I say, it, it's just, it's completely opened up um, an entire new chapter for experimentation. Mm -hmm. Looking at yeasts, fermentations, creating different dis well, distillery characters. So when, when you set up the, the thing is, uh, was that like the only yeast? Did you try different strains or? Yeah, during the project, um, it was kind of inspired by the writings of Michael Jackson in his Whiskey Compendium. Mm -hmm. And in his whiskey book, he said that Glenmorangie had its own unique yeast strain. Now it didn't, it, we think it was like a misinterpretation or a misunderstanding, <laughs> but it sparked this kind of creative inspiration in my boss's head. So Dr. Bill decided, let's, let's, let's find a yeast, let's find something <laughs> special. So he went out into the, the fields around about Glenmorangie with mm -hmm. some yeast specialists from a company called Lalamond. And they started just sampling and taking stuff off the ears of barley in the fields around the distillery. So how, how can you... How can you imagine that? Is that just you? You go up with a spatula and pretty and much then petri dish, yeah, and then pretty much petri <laughs> dishes, and then then it's over to the yeast <laughs> specialists. So we let them uh, analyze how much was in there, and they got mm -hmm. it down to like four yeast strains that they thought had potential, mm -hmm. and then they quickly moved that down, moved that down, and got to like just this one yeast that they really, really liked, um, which ended up being the yeast that over time they grew it, they put it under tests, put it under stress. And then over time they went, yeah, this is now ready for like a, an on-site trial, an on-site experiment. And that on-site experiment, a long time ago, has eventually emerged as Glenmorangie Alta. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, Let, let's try it. 
Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing is with the the wild yeast, uh, I think we've had some, we've heard some some news from like the wine industry where uh -huh. they do quite a lot with the the wild yeast and that kind of stuff, and it it has very varying degrees of successfulness. Yes, I think, but you you didn't. It is a wild yeast, but you cultivated it, right? Exactly. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't like a, a lambic fermentation where you just open up and just allow things to happen naturally, and that would be a mixture of different yeasts. This was identifying one yeast out in the wild, but then using only that and, and actively pitching it into the fermentation. Mm -hmm. But I still imagine that uh, your normal yeast is pretty, pretty much stronger. I think the yield and yeah and duration and that kind of stuff is probably going to be. The yield dropped by about 15%. Yeah. 15%? So okay. Quite a lot. 15 in some of the batches, 20 in others. So mm -hmm. the yield dropped way down. Um, the flavour profile changed quite noticeably. Really surprised me how different the new make spirits were. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we have an advantage in uh, our fermentation at Glenmorangie is in stainless steel vats. Mm -hmm. So because it's in stainless steel, before we started this trial, we could clean the vats completely. You know, so there was no Saccharomyces cerevisiae left behind. Mm -hmm. And so it was just a pure um, inoculation with wild yeast, with this mm -hmm. Saccharomyces diama. So um, you did you cap, keep some of the, the yeast? Sure, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, we have quite a lot on little slides, you know, which you can very quickly, they're frozen. And ah, then you okay. can grow them up, grow them up, grow. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, when they're frozen, they, they don't mutate, right? No, no, don't change at all. Go, just go completely to sleep basically. Okay. But yeah, so Alta, cheers. Alta. Slash it. Alta, of course, means wild. So it's just a recognition mm -hmm. of this wild yeast. And so, I mean, straight away, you can tell things have changed. So it's still mineral rich water, it's still distilled in the tallest copper pot stills. It's still matured in ex bourbon casks. It's, it's definitely sure. You, you can feel that it's a... But it's, the yeast has changed. It's things. mild, but it's, it's a lot a lot different. And the thing is, it's always hard to tell what is different because you do have a lot less bourbon influence. I find it very... Um, well, I think I need more water because this is a... Uh, it's quite with, high. With the strength, this is a, a bit of a strange comparison. At the full strength, what I like about it is it's rare that Glenmorangie at full strength is something I like. But this one, I like the fact that it's just quite precise. You know, the flavours are very bright, very clear. There's something like cereal, so mm -hmm. like like ripening barley in a field. Um, chewy biscuits, almost. Mm -hmm. um, there's like a grassy herbalness. Yeah, for me, it's a bit, bit I don't want to say fresher, but it's it's less in these uh this mango and yes it's I a agree. bit less sweet than than the other one but you still find it's a more, lot of that yeah, malt yeah. and what you said cereal that cereal kind of stuff absolutely it's i would say the original is more fruity the sort of yeah, sweet the tropical. definitely this is more floral and herbal mm -hmm. so it has a dried grass outside yeah he bit barley more wild <laughs> yeah 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 but not rough wild but as in oh no it's it's Heather, wild in terms Heather of wild or yeah, yeah <laughs> wild in terms of glenmorangie which is always going to be quite rounded and fresh it's starting to get like if you add water again so i know you've added water once but see if you put water in a second time you will start to bring out you're going to encourage out some of the sweetness mm -hmm. um so you'll see the whiskey gets a little oilier in the glass, and that's because the the fatty acids and the oils that were soluble at 51.2 are now coming out of solution. Mm -hmm. So it's like breaking open the whiskey. Yeah, so it's still not as strong as it is an original, but you should start finding some, I don't know, dehydrated apricots or orange skins, maybe even caramelized lemons. Mm-hmm. And I'm now starting to get this brilliant mintiness as well. I mm -hmm. love that minty flavour that comes mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. 
now that you say it definitely that's what i found with the the freshness yep yeah it's a bit more fresh and has that mint but it's a a mild mint it's not, almost not like the um, mint, but the, no 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 it's, it's, it's um what would you call this it's the like the little mint mints. candies little mint candies yeah. glazier mints we call them fox's glazier mint so it's just quite light quite fresh and again this word precise i keep finding these flavors are really they're quite sharp and they're quite obvious mm -hmm. they're quite beautiful as well mm -hmm. so uh this was the 10th uh, mm -hmm. edition we can expect uh, more in the future um or the private collection is gonna stay it's a good question it's a good question so we're always working five years in advance, mm -hmm. you know, minimum. So we have many, many other exciting projects that, so we, it's gonna continue. that we think are <laughs> going to be great. But there is um, there is a question to be answered of, you know, should we stop at 10? I, I personally, I hope it keeps going, you know, because mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the most exciting projects of our year, if not the most exciting project of our year. Mm -hmm. um, myself, Gillian and Bill, so the, the mm -hmm. we were all in the Whiskey Creation team together and we were all down in London last week doing the global launch and it's mm -hmm. just it's just such an exciting thing and I get to come to countries and talk about it. So mm -hmm. I, I hope it keeps going, but, mm. you know. Yeah, that's the thing with whiskey for me is uh, I like the whiskey because you have so much uh, diversity and so much different things, mm -hmm. even though mm -hmm. you have so much tradition. So yeah. it's for me, whiskey is the perfect match between... Uh, something new and tradition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's really, really nice how you can say, oh, I'm just tweaking that little thing. Yeah, yeah, just and, change one thing. And then you have, in the output, you have something else that, that totally <laughs> changed. And it's it's amazing how how can you, you could you could probably, with that yeast, you could do so much variations. And well, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> so we're famous for innovation, you know. Mm -hmm. We created, we pioneered, we started mm -hmm. the whole wood finishing mm -hmm. um, experiment that's now a key part of making Scotch whiskey. Um, even in the even in the eighteen hundreds, we were one of the first distilleries to install indirect heating, so steam heating of stills. Ah, okay. Um, these days, the last ten years, we've really proved how innovative we can be with all of our spirits. Mm -hmm. um, and also, uh, this now with this spirit innovation, you know, with um, taking yeast and creating something different, uh, it's just opened up this entire chapter of Mm -hmm. ideas and things that we can do so yeah. it's, it's an exciting time yeah so yeah thank you very much for having that insight into creating whiskey and sure. a bit of a background behind uh what, what comes into one of these bottles yeah so sure. um yeah huh? thank you very much thank and, you uh yeah, yeah. cheers <laughs> cheers and yeah thank you very much for watching and see you next time